Good evening. Leading the news this Monday, 95 reports of alive Americans still in Vietnam are being pursued. The incident between the United States and Iran and the Persian Gulf cooled down, and Holland and Scandinavia braced for new terrorist attacks against Americans and Israelis. The details are in our news summary coming up. Robin? After that news summary, our first focus is the ongoing controversy about Americans missing in action in Indochina. We talked to the State Department official and a representative of MIA families just back from Hanoi. Next, we analyze today's Supreme Court case, which could affect most of the current inmates of death row. Finally, the move to demand higher academic standards from college athletes. We discuss what it could do to black colleges. The White House said today that the Iranian Navy had no just cause for stopping and searching a U.S. merchant ship. Armed Iranian sailors stopped the 27,000-ton President Taylor in international waters in the Gulf of Oman to see if she was carrying arms for Iraq. It was the first time an American ship has been searched in the five-year-old Iran-Iraq war. White House spokesman Larry Speak said incidents like this can create volatile situations. But State Department spokesman Bernard Kalb said that Iran may have acted within its rights. The rules of naval warfare have traditionally accorded a belligerent certain rights to ascertain whether neutral shipping is being used to provide contraband to an opposing belligerent. We are continuing to assess the facts of this particular incident, not all of which are yet known, to determine whether the stop and search was appropriate under the circumstances. We have stated our concern about this incident because of the danger of misunderstandings, overstepping of rights and norms, and even violence, which are inherent in all ship search incidents. Defense Secretary Weinberger said that U.S. warships responded to a call for help from the President Taylor, but arrived after the Iranians had left. Pentagon officials declined to say whether or not the U.S. Navy would now tighten its watch over U.S. ships entering the Gulf. There is a fresh terrorist alert in Europe. Interpol, the international police organization, notified the governments of the Netherlands, Norway, Denmark, and Sweden to expect terrorist attacks against Israeli, Jewish, or American targets. Approaches to the U.S. Embassy in The Hague were barricaded. Some 10,000 Americans living in Amsterdam were notified today to be on personal alert. Israeli, diplomatic, and airline offices, synagogues, and other places were also put under police protection. The Interpol warning said the attacks were expected from Abu Nidal, the Palestinian terrorist group which is accused of committing the December attacks at the Vienna and Rome airports. The fruits of another and most unusual interview with Muammar Gaddafi were released today. The Libyan leader held a weekend news conference with six Western female reporters. It was conducted in Gaddafi's tent headquarters. Associated Press reporter Jennifer Parmalee reported Gaddafi said he would gladly entertain President Reagan in the tent. He also said Libya had no hostile intentions toward the United States, but repeated his threat to send suicide teams in action against the U.S. if his nation is attacked. After a stormy session, Israel's cabinet today agreed to settle a long-standing border dispute with Egypt by binding arbitration, paving the way for the resumption of friendlier relations. The dispute concerns the 250-acre Taba Beach Resort on the Red Sea's Gulf of Aqaba. Agreement to arbitration was a victory for Prime Minister Shimon Peres over the objections of right-wing members of his coalition. There was heavy fighting in Beirut between rival Christian militias over the new Syrian-backed plan to end Lebanon's civil war. Some Christian groups feel the plan gives too much power to Lebanese Muslims. Christian President Amin Jamal, who's not yet given his support to the plan, went to Damascus for more discussions. The fighting was between militiamen loyal to Jamal and a rival group that contends the Jamal government has gone too far in giving more political power to the Muslims in Lebanon. They apparently were trying to cut off Jamal's militia in the city from reinforcements in the mountains nearby. Reports from the hospital said at least two people were killed and 11 were wounded in the fighting.